Proxy is this. It's the future, and the world is a wasteland. People live in domes. And people work with auto raves. Auto raves are robots that help people out. Now, one of our main characters, who's called Riel Mare, who works for the government of this dome, is looking into murders when she sees something come out at her, then goes away, and finds a handprint. Her auto rave Iggy also sees this. After that, she heads back to her place where something breaks into her room. She becomes unconscious and wakes up. The next day, she asks to investigate what's going on, but the government says no. But she does it anyways, because she's a hard ass, no nonsense bitch. Then we meet Vincent Ma. He's trying to become a citizen. And we also meet Pino. Pino. I hope I got that right. A auto rave who serves as a surrogate child, and Rao Curry, who is the newly appointed director, director, sorry, general of the Citizen Security Bureau. Ergo Proxy's story tries to be a deep, well-developed story, but fails miserably at it for these reasons. First reason: as much as the story tries to be deep, it becomes boring with episodes going nowhere. One episode has Pino in a cartoon world where the person living in the cartoon world looks like Walt Disney. No, I'm not making that. He actually does look like Walt Disney. And it turns out she's in a dream. He tells her that he doesn't want them in his dome and guess what? They don't go in. But here's a story. Ray Miller meets Vincent Law. After that he finds his auto rave dead. They think he did it. He leaves the city with Pino, whose mom died. She was killed by the proxy. I'll get to the proxy in a little bit. They go into the wasteland. Ray Miller tries to bring him back, aka Vincent. She gets sick. Someone else takes her home in the dome. Take a guess what happens to him. It's not very hard. Vincent and Pino, Pino, sorry, again, start looking for a new dome. Next, Vincent finds out he's a proxy. Riel Mare finds them again with her auto rave. Her auto rave dies. Riel Mare, Vincent, and Pino all go to a destroyed dome to find Vincent's memories. Then they have to return back to Riel Mare's dome. Can y'all take a guess what's gonna happen next? It ain't that hard. And it gets destroyed! That's the story of Ergo Proxy in a nutshell. The second reason, the proxy themselves. Ergo proxy is about the proxy and how they are immortal. They help build the domes. They're messengers from God and they can turn into monsters. You know what though? I am glad they didn't say they were fucking vampires. Oh, if they had said that I would have lost my fucking mind. Now, you think that would make a good story, but it doesn't. The proxy aren't interesting characters. They are boring. When they're in their human form, they don't do anything but talk. You think that would help develop the characters, but no, instead, they start using philosophies, which leads to reason three. The proxy like to use philosophies way too much. They keep talking about philosophies all the time. It never helps develop the characters. Now. Cowboy Bebop used philosophies as well, but it knew when to use them. Ergo Proxy doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. Now the final reason, number four. Ergo Proxy had a really good side story about the auto rays becoming infected. If they had become infected, they can't be controlled. Now later on, Pino and Iggy both become infected. 
but they start to show real emotion and care about the people they're with. Why couldn't Ergo Proxy be about the auto rays becoming infected? That would have made for a better story. Anyways, I'm giving Ergo Proxy's story a D plus, and I'm being way too fucking generous. Now, the characters. Ergo Proxy characters are a hit and a huge miss. Let's first talk about Vincent Law. He's one of the main characters, and he's boring. They try to make him the person you feel for, but he comes off dull and boring. Next, Riel Mare. She's a hard-ass girl who wants to find out the truth. The problem is she's not that interesting. In fact, you really don't like her. She comes off as a complete and total bitch 95% of the time in this anime. Jeez, she's just a complete and total bitch. You will hate her. Even when her auto wave Iggy is trying to show some sympathy and saying he cares for her, she's like, Oh, wait, I'm supposed to care, aren't I? Oh, well, I don't. You're an auto wave and I don't give a shit. She really is nothing more than a bitch and I did not like her. Then you have Raul Creed, who out of all the human characters is the best developed. But you never know what he wants to do. Does he want to destroy the dome or save it? His actions are all over the fucking place. And finally you have Pino and Iggy. When they both become infected, they get a lot of development, especially Pino. She starts to show true emotion like sadness and being truly happy. Wow. Two Aures are better developed than the main characters. Anyways, the characters in Ego Proxy get a C-. Now the animation and music. Ergo Proxy's music is forgettable. And the animation is a hit and miss. When they are in the dome, it's a city, and it looks great. There's a lot going on in the city, and there's a lot of detail. It really does work. The city really looks nice here. The problem is, they're not in the city that much. They're in a wasteland, and the wasteland looks the fucking same. Thanks to them using way too much gray. Now, if they kept it in the dome, the animation would have gone a B, but because of the wasteland and it looking the fucking same and all that goddamn gray, the animation gets a C-. Believe it or not, the dub for Ergo Proxy is surprisingly good. None of the voice acting feels rushed or lazy. It works all. It's not great voice acting, but it's good. I'm going to give Ergo Proxy's dub a surprisingly enough, a solid B. Ergo Proxy is an anime that tries way too hard to be a complex story and fails miserably at it. I'm giving Ergo Proxy a D plus, and this is Ash saying so long and good night. Hey, God.